Good day. Happy day, everybody. Let me know if you can hear me. I have one of my earphones and uh, they the cheapies. So, um, just want to make sure y'all can hear me. Just somebody let me know that you can hear me before I start talking. Good morning. Peace, peace, peace. So I wanted to talk about self-love this morning because I've been seeing a lot of... Um... Thank you, thank you, Bear. It's 74. Thank you, the mood maker. Put my glasses on. I don't know why, like, something about... Glasses on makes you feel like you can hear better or think better. I don't know. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about self-love this morning because um, it is a process. It is a deep process. Divine self-love is a deep process. And it's something that I encounter every day and that is ongoing. And that is, you know, a part of my actual experience all the time. And... Uh, I have to constantly stay on top of this process. This is not a process that I can, um, you know, ignore or, you know, act like I don't have to do it. And this is mainly for my folks who had um, abuse, um, childhood abuse and trauma, and who've had relationships where they've uh, had very codependent behaviors or, um, attracted someone who reminded them of a parent of a who had narcissistic traits or something like that because that's what generally is happening when we have abusive parents we have our we have a parent that has some narcissistic traits or it might be a narcissist um, and then they pass on those uh, behaviors to us and we either take them on full fully and become truly like narcissistic in our ways of being we be, or we become empathic and respond to abusive people in a certain kind of a way um uh, you know i'm trying to get out of the habit of using the word attract because as i understand it on my journey we're attracting everything we're attracting good things we're attracting that so favorable things um it's about discernment and understanding what gets to stay in our space and what doesn't get to stay in our space and this is what this self-love divine self-love is about is growing and learning how to discern what is a part of divine self-love what represents that what energies help feed that energy and so, you know, I have several self-love, self-care practices. One of my self-love, self-care practices is yoga, of course. That's why I share that with you guys all the time. Art, um, jewelry making, plant, you know, keeping my plants alive, um, skating, dancing, um, meditation. All types of different things can be a part of your self-love practice. Your self-love practice has to look, um, make sense to you. And so... You know, that's why, you know, you hear a lot of sharing around self-love because um, people are trying to, you know, exp show their experiences. Um, and, you know, it's, these are just examples of what you can do. <sighs> so when your cup is full, right? So the goal is filling your cup and maintaining the relationship with the divine and your higher self and that can look however you need it to look you might not be a prayer or meditator um you might have a relationship with the divine that looks very different than what mine looks like i'm a prayer and a meditator um that's how my relationship with the divine looks and i talk to the the divine um and mainly when i draw i know that i am communing with the divine when i'm creating with my hands um and what I learned on this journey is that how, you know, the self has to be centered. 
because that's the thing. The reason why you don't know how to love yourself properly or haven't had the advantage of loving yourself properly is because yourself hadn't been centered in most of your life. You were decentered. Everything else was around you was centered. The abusive parent, the relationships, the job, your children, everything was centered and you're decentered. And so you have to develop how to center yourself because the reason why you need to be centered in your space is because that all those other things I just mentioned that are around you, they really don't go well or function at their highest capacity without you being centered. And I noticed this for myself. Like when I decenter myself and I center other things first, everything's like, <laughs> chaotic um it's uh doesn't feel good it feels transactional which i'm not interested in i don't like transactional relationships i don't like transactional spaces i don't like tit for tat you do this you, i'm gonna do that um because for me it reminds me of my childhood it reminds me of abusive relationships it reminds me of spaces where i never felt good enough or valued and that was mainly because my value was attached to my what i could do not who i am okay so centering your self-love allows you to stay in the space of who you are and not what you can do for all the things places and people around you because when you center the things pieces people and places around you your value is based in what you can do and when you start looking at yourself as a contractual or transactional being you're going to run out you're going to be depleted. You're going to become resentful. You're going to become angry. When you center yourself as a transact, I mean, when you center other things and you are revolving around something instead of it revolving around you, the, the transactional energy is like wonky. Transactional energy takes away from you. You always calculating what you bring to the space, what others bring to the space is um building resentment is building harm in yourself harm in your body harm in your mind when you center yourself not based on what you can do but who you are that's an infinite infinite source there is no way to calculate that there is no way to measure that there is no way to compare that there is no way to make that a uh, a thing where I'm doing this for you or you're doing that for me. And the way we're taught relationship, a lot of the times, because we have been raised in these homes with parents who are abusive, and then we take these same behaviors into our relationships and make our relationships based on tit for tat, what you can do for me, but you know what I mean? Um, we fall short of these expectations all the time, and our mates fall short of these expectations all the time, and our jobs fall short of these expectations. I'm saying this because I really know that the way that we're going to become whole is not by focusing on who we are, who, what we do in this world and what other people are doing for us. The moment I'm in my relationship and I start to say, well, I did this and I did that. I know that I haven't been spending enough time with me. I know that I've been decentering me. I know that I've been devaluing me. I know that I've been taken away from me. And it's time for me to go back into my self-love practices even deeper. Start filling my cup up. What does that look like? Do I need to meditate more? Do I need to pray more? Do I need to practice art? Do I need to practice yoga? Do I need to implement a new learning style for me to connect with my divine self, with my higher self, with God, with my ancestors? I know that the lack is me. If any time that I'm focusing outward and saying there's a lack, it's because I have decentered myself, therefore devaluing myself, therefore harming myself. And I, I, I see a lot of, you know, this whole, I, you know what I think it is? I just got overwhelmed. I need to take a break from TikTok, honestly. <laughs> I just got overwhelmed over there with the back and forth 
uh, black men and black women and what do you bring to the table and what do you not bring to the table and even though I don't deal with that in my relationship it's very heart-wrenching to see this going on in so many of our spaces that this is the mode of way we love each other that love is transactional I my children cannot do anything for me they can't do shit for me. They can't, they can't do anything loving for me other than exist. But I give them everything that they need in order to have the best life that I can provide for them. And I do not look at them like they owe me something because I'm their mother. This, this relationship should not be transactional. No relationship should not be transactional. It's really disheartening to see how we have basically turned on our heads and used the same tactics that we were brought to this country for against each other. This is exactly how they used to look at us on the auctioning block. When they used to steal us from the slave ports and trap us down in the slave ships and bring us over here. And then we get here. Oh, she survived. Oh, she did. This is going on. She can have, she had a baby on the boat. They're sitting up here calculating our worth by our survival and what we can take. And this is the same shit. This shit hurt my, it really hurts me to see this. This is the same stuff that we're doing in relationships. Black people, we're doing this in relationship, men and women, women and women, men and men, with each other. Mother, mothers understand we ought to reach this. This is the day of the feminine. Teach that love, sis. I appreciate you, sis. I just, I've never seen such disconnection. It's like so disheartening. I don't have any words for it, like, the, the amount of broken hearts out here, the amount of trauma that is leading the conversation, the amount of children running around in adult bodies that have access to technology and can say their thoughts and everything. And people are so hurt and so sad and miserable that they're just like hopping on these miserable ass trains and creating like big ass spaces of miserableness in our community to harm each other using the same tactics that were used against us To keep us down, to keep us tied to slavery. Using those same tactics on each other. God. Oh. I just get so... I don't want to say I get tired, but I get discouraged, you know? I want us to be better. And you know, I get so many comments when I put up my husband's in my video. Oh, I want a relationship like this. This is divine. This is this. This is that. And it's like, you can see this, right? You can see it outside of yourself, but you can't see it inside of yourself. The disconnect is so deep. And it's like, you know, I know y'all must always be this or y'all must always. Do you know the amount of sacrifice that love takes? Love is a big Deal. Loving someone is huge. Allowing someone to love you is huge. Letting them in your space is huge. You know how many barriers, how many childhood traumas, how many conversations, how many tears, how many nights of 
like just looking at each other and talking to each other that we had to do to get to what we get to on that map every time we take a video and I cut it up for 15 seconds for y'all just to see you know the conversations that we have to have every time we do a yoga session a reiki session a tantra session and we go deeper into the void with each other because it is a void it is the unknown there are spaces and spaces inside of us that we've never been to even on our own you know the trust that you have to build with somebody? You can't be sitting up here titting for tatting with somebody when you're trying to do some shit like that. You can't be sitting up here counting. If you did the laundry, I made food today, and I paid this bill, and then I did that. You can't be doing that shit. Wow. You can't be sitting up here calculating who did what when your heart is on the line. When your soul is on the line, when your ancestors are fighting for you, you can't be doing that shit. Please, y'all, stop it. Get in touch with yourself. Start loving on yourself deeply. Start taking yourself seriously. Loving yourself is a big deal. Just like allowing somebody to love you is a big deal. And you never stop doing it. I don't, I don't stop loving me. I don't stop making space for me. I don't stop making time for me. I don't stop doing the things that I need to do. And I tell my partner all the time, if something that you want to do for me is going to take away from you, don't do it. I don't want you to be less so I can be more. Because I'm not going to be less so you can be more. I'm never going to do that. I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to fill me up. And what I have that's overflowing, I will give to you. That's exactly what I want from you. I want your overflow. I don't want you what you need to survive. And the way that we learn love, because we were abused, mistreated, and left alone to our own devices, is that we take what, what everybody needs to survive. We're just grasping, grasping, grasping that shit. This is why you gotta love yourself. Does self-love replace romantic love? No. No, it doesn't. But it holds the space. It holds the space for you to grow with another person. You don't have the space in yourself to grow with yourself. You cannot create the space outside of yourself. Everything, that's what they say, as above, so below. That's only that saying is inside. What's on the inside is what's on the outside. You know what I mean? So you can't ever look at what's on the outside to know what's on the inside. You have to see what's on people's inside to know what's on their outside. If somebody treats themselves well, most likely they will treat you well. If they complaining about bills, constantly worried about being uh, broke or giving somebody something, upset about what they're not receiving in the world, always calculating everything down to the T, they probably don't have shit to give you because they're not giving it to themselves. And this is where discernment comes in. Do you treat yourself like that? If you do change it, because that is not love. When I tell myself, oh, you can't have that. I don't say you can't have that. I say not right now. We're going to work towards this. I don't limit myself. Or I ask myself, where does this desire come from? If the desire is based in lack, I address the lack. Not the desire. I want the best for everyone. Even the people who brought us here. Because their healing is tied to our healing. It really is. Their healing is tied to our healing. And that's why we, literally it's a lot of the reason why we have so much difficulties. Because we stay watching their ass. And to get into us. 
start taking care of us, start taking care of what our foundation, start taking care of what we want to create for ourselves. And that starts individually. Movements are beautiful things, but people are fickle and not everybody is well that starts a movement. Unfortunately, the movement might come from a divine inspiration, but it's not always driven by a divine love. And that's what we have to be driven by, divine love. Not lack, not scarcity, not negativity, not pain. And the only way you're gonna get to a divine love is if you create a divine space in your heart for yourself and to connect to whatever higher power you believe in, or if you don't believe in a higher power, if you're your own higher power, if you're connecting to that. We have to learn how to create our own spaces. And that's why every, you know, that's why I mentioned before the self-love te uh, techniques that everyone's sharing. Look around. Try them. Maybe they won't work for you. But maybe they will open up the space and lead you to something that's more in alignment with who you are. I did not start yoga intentionally. I started yoga because I was taking pole dancing. And I loved pole dancing. I loved the energy of it. I loved everything about it. But I wasn't flexible. So I said, huh, let me see what yoga can do about my flexibility. I haven't been on a pole since. Because yoga was where I was supposed to be. Nothing wrong with pole dancing. I think it's beautiful. But the pole, exploring pole dancing led me to yoga. And it has blossomed me into the person that I am. It's helped me heal in such a divine way. And there's so many healing modalities. There's so many things that are out here. It doesn't have to be yoga. It doesn't have to be Reiki. Maybe it's Kung Fu. Maybe it's Taekwondo. Maybe it's uh, African dance. Maybe it's um, something else that helps you connect to that whirling center that lives inside you, that tells you which way to go because we all have a divine path inside of us. We have it. It's hidden by all the bullshit that we're constantly paying attention to because it's louder than our internal voice. Why? Because our internal voice was cut off when we were little, when we were children, by the adults around us, when they told us to stop listening to our internal voice and listen to them. Because they've been not listening to their internal voice for a long time. So they couldn't teach you how to listen to your internal voice. They didn't have that guidance. They had replaced that with Jesus, drugs, sex, or whatever it is that made them feel good in the moment. We're having a huge awakening. As y'all know, we're in the age of Aquarius. And information is everywhere that's all the age of aquarius is is it's just all the teachings that people have known forever is available to you everywhere you look if you don't resonate with me you don't resonate with how i look what i sound like who the timbre of my voice find someone's voice someone's face someone's energy who you resonate with so you can get your directives your next steps how to move forward in your life. I had plenty of teachers and still do. I have never done anything by myself. Nothing. Every path that I've been on was set before me by someone that I trusted. Because I loved myself enough to get out of my own way. Because I wanted what was on the other side more than I wanted to hold on to what I knew. Let me see what y'all are talking about. <laughs> hey, y'all. We talking about, um, just talking about divine self-love and connecting to source. Not less is more. Yes, girl. Connecting to source, creating a relationship with yourself and maintaining that relationship with yourself. Not so you can attract good things. Good things are always coming to you. Even when you're not in a relationship with yourself, you just don't have the discernment yet to notice what is a good thing and what is a not so favorable thing for you. So you're repeating lessons, doing work, gathering information, and you'll do this 
throughout your entire life. There is no end to this journey. Until you drop this body, that's all you're doing is you're gathering information, you're having experiences, you're checking off this works, this doesn't work. And something that didn't work at first might show up for you in the future and work then. Why it didn't work for you in the, in the beginning might be because you were not elevated enough. You were in a space to move that energy in a way that, that you need to be. But you've done the work, you recalibrated, and now some of that certain energy shows up and you can move the way that you thought you could have moved previously. We are in an experience. Experience, meaning you have to do it. You have to participate. All right. I want to thank y'all for hanging out with me this morning. I hope this was useful to everyone who hopped on. I just want you to remember you have to experience your experience. You have to step into the void. I know it's hard and it's difficult and it's scary because the unknown. But what have you got to lose? You got all this back story you know what's back there you can run those stories off the tips of your fingers you know i was seven this happened i was 12 this happened i was eight this happened i was 20 this happened i was 15 this happened you know those stories those are guidelines for what to do or what not to do those are specific, they, tools came from those stories. Specific tools came from those stories. This is all I teach when I teach women about trauma work. Go to the age where the trauma happened. Pull out the story. Take the emotions out. What was the story? What happened? Did you learn anything? Did you lose anything? Did you detach from yourself emotionally in a way? Did you stop being a specific type of person because you didn't trust yourself in that way anymore? What did you leave back there? That's your tool. You need that, go get it. It's time travel. Go to the past, bring what you need from it, take it to the future, use it. Leave the rest of that shit back there. It's not serving you. You don't have to keep on reliving it. Now, there are some things that are so traumatic, you have to get certain types of healing work done, somatic practices. Uh, what do you call that? When you're... <laughs> hypno hypnotherapy, certain things like that help. Good morning, Kundalini, for the culture. Um... And in order to get those experiences out of your body, I use yoga for that. Yoga helps me get experiences out of my body. It doesn't work for everyone, but everybody don't go hard on yoga like I go hard on yoga. I do yoga for three hours. Everybody don't feel like that. That's why, you know, you have to start moving. It's not, we gotta get out of this idea that moving is just for losing weight. Moving is healing. If you lose weight, great. Who cares? Heal. It don't matter if you're losing weight, if you still have the same mindset. If you're still trapped in your eight-year-old mind and you the finally got to the 130 or 50 pounds that you wanted to get to and you're eight years old in this body. Chanting is a good one too. Yes, sis, it is. Yeah, we have to... Get this shit out of us. Because those are all the blockages to getting to that space of loving yourself. You are hearing all these what ifs and this happened to me and oh, what about this time? And Okay. It was a part of your life. It was a part of your story. It's not who you are. And I know it's the popular thing to make your tragedy, your comeuppance. I know it. I know that social media has made this thing where we are all on here. I was this at such and such. And some people need to do that. That is cathartic for some people, but that's not everybody's way to get to, 
I like to say the yams. Like, you know, Martin say, I want to get to the yams. That's how I feel. I always want to get to the yams. I want to get to the catfish, Varnell. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Show me how to get there. Um, so, whatever is in my way that's stopping me from getting to my highest and greatest possibility, I'm willing to tackle it. I'm willing to take it on. I'm willing to sit with it. I'm willing to engage it. My fear has led me so far out of myself. So far away from myself. So I'm so disconnected. I'm not even who I actually was when I came here. How do I get back there? I got to walk through it. You got to go through it. Yes, get to the yams, baby. I'm trying to get in deep suit. That's a good word. Yeah, we got to. And that's literally what I'm seeing when I see all this transactional. What do you do for me? And what are you doing for me? And I'm going to do what you bring to the table. And I am the table conversations. It's just like. I'm not having this type of conversation with nobody on this earth. Thank God my husband would never say some shit like that because he would be divorced. I'm not having these types of conversations. I bring me to the table. This is a self-worth and value conversation you need to have. Don't ask me no stupid shit like that. I will never ask nobody like that, no shit like that. <laughs> You bring to the table. Right, girl, that's some bullshit. How about your your healing? Have you healed from the fact that you your you feel like your mother treated you wrong or your father touched you inappropriately? Have you healed from the fact that you feel like you were picked on in school or whatever and now you're carrying around a bone around to all the women in your space because you feel like they wouldn't have chose you before? How about that? Do that work. Do that. That bring that to the table. Because let me explain something to you about money. <laughs> if you don't feel good, if you don't feel love, you know, good about yourself, you might get some money. But you're gonna slowly like destroy those opportunities for yourself. Because you don't fuck with you for real. You might, you know, create some shit off some bravado. I've done that. I've created some shit off some bravado. But let me ex explain. It doesn't last. Why? Because bravado needs more anger. More frustration. And usually when you get to the top, you're not really frustrated. You're not really frustrated. You're content. And what you, the energy you use to get you where you want to be is not available to you anymore. How do you create? That's why love is the energy that you create from. Because it's so expansive. You can dig into that well forever. You need to get all the money without healing. You exploit it all. Yes. And that's what we see. We see so many people who got in magical... Um, overnight stories they don't even like themselves you see that i had to turn off so many people on this app because you know i was you know people send me now look at this person she blew up overnight or look at this person he blew up overnight and then you see them doing all types of harmful things to themselves and i'm like i can't support this i can't get in alignment with this i'm happy that they were able to create what they were able to create i'm not jealous i'm not but I will not support this because now you're out here, uh, have all this attention, have all of these followers, have all these people hanging onto your every word and you don't even like you. And that's what you're teaching people. How not to like themselves. Cause you have a big platform. Sorry, trigger finger. And the shit is dangerous. <laughs> I just ha huh, girl I use I see a lot of people always talking about app suppression and 
You know how TikTok doesn't forward our information and uh, Instagram is hiding our information and all that shit. I like to think that the people who can hear me are hearing me. If it's five people, I don't give a fuck. Those are the five people I'm supposed to be talking to. You ever think that it's not actual suppression? That it's actually that most people are robots, are zombies, and they would not even be able to listen to you. That the, uh, the attachment to certain things is so thick that what you're saying sounds like a foreign language. That's why I don't care about uh, if Instagram suppresses my shit or whoever, whatever app suppresses my shit. I don't care. I don't never talk about that shit because it's pointless to me at this point. We know that people who are talking sense and are not talking um, nonsense are going to have smaller followings than people who are promoting other things. It's just a fact of just like, this world likes mess. And before I was doing my healing work, I liked mess too. It felt good to be in some mess. I felt like I was a part of something. I had friends. <laughs> Girl, and it is lonely. Healing can feel lonely when you are seeing shit for what it is, when you are not willing to put on rose colored glasses for everything. It can feel lonely. It's just the same way, like, you know, you talk about abuse in your family and you go talk to your parent or whoever. Right, isolating when everybody else is living in the world. Girl, yes. And you go talk to your parent or whatever, and they have this peace. They have this whole story like, oh, no, that's not how it went down. No, that's not what happened at all. Like, I was a very good mother. <laughs> and you're like, am I crazy? Is, it, is she okay? No, you're not crazy. They need that. They need it. It's keeping them alive. The truth at this point in their life would kill them. It's so shameful. It's so guilt ridden who they've been, who they are. And when you don't let shame and guilt run you and you're authentic, shit get real, real. It gets different. And I'm going to tell you, I never had friends. I have friends. Like, I have folks that fuck with me. But I grew up, I never had friends. It's not a hard position. It's not an in position. I've never been a favorite. And when I owned that, that I always was an outlier. In most situations. Now I have outlier friends. That are on the outside of their family. And on the outside of their circles. But not main group people. I don't have friends that are main character people. I don't. They, those type of people don't resonate with me. And I've grown to be okay with that. And that is a thing that we have to grow out of as we walk into our self-love journey and walk into our healing journey, that we are not the, you know, the it girl. Black sheep roll call, yeah. <laughs> and there are trappings of the it girl, right? It's just really the, these apps and shit, you just can't, can't let them get in your head. This is another fake world too. This is this world is only what we make it, just like the world we're living in, right? <laughs> Black sheep roll call. 
Right, man. That's that's some real shit. You need to make that shirt, girl. I buy that one. I'm serious. Kundalini for the culture. Um, but yeah, y'all. I think I'm done. You know how like when you talking and you can feel like your tongue is rested. That's 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 it. That's when I say when I say I'm done. That mean like spirit is. I don't have nothing else. Say no more. In me. <laughs> I'm deflated. Like you take a good breath and you let it out and empty your whole belly. That's how I feel right now. I'm complete. Yes. Yes. I used to. We used to have to say that in this leadership program that I was in. I'm complete. I'm complete, sis. I appreciate y'all for hanging out with me. I'm going to lead this up. Um, and I hope y'all have a beautiful day. And I hope that, you know, the way to you is opened with joy, prosperity, love, and so much beauty. Talk to y'all later. Peace. Send a tie later. <laughs> Hey, you can always go to my shop if you feel inclined. I am having a sale. I need to be better at this. Use the code LOVE, 15% off. The shop link is in my bio, or you can go to the shop and connect to the shop that way. Um, if you like crystals and crystal jewelry. I appreciate y'all. Holla at y'all later. Peace.